Lottie to say we've got Kira McGee with us this morning. Kira, how you doing? Hi, yeah, hi, Arya. I'm good, thank you. So, uh, congratulations, and I guess some commiserations as well on an absolutely brilliant performance at the weekend. How do you feel with this bit of a remove that you were so close to getting a medal and yet you performed so brilliantly as well? What's what's your overriding takeaway? Um, oh, it's bittersweet. I'm I'm happy with my performance. I went out there and tried my best, but nobody wants to finish fourth. I went there to try to win a medal and fell short. So. Yeah, I'm I'm waking up. Um, oh, I, I'm not going to say upset. I'm not crying over it, but very, uh, very much my fist clenched and hit the bed a bit, being like oh, so close. But no, it's it's left me hungry for more. So um, I don't know. Sometimes fourth place is probably the best place to be. Yeah, they always say fourth place is the worst place to finish. As Jura said there, there's a number of things that you could point to from your performance at the weekend which would suggest that it was a good finish because you look at you look beyond the figure, you look beyond the fourth place finish and you look at the performance. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I went out there and I ran the race that I planned to do and I executed it the way the way myself and my coach planned. And um, yeah, it literally came down to to the last little stretch and, and the British girls went out and I think... I think they deliberately went out hard to try to take a bit of the kick out of out of Enui and myself because they they knew that we finished strong and and it it worked. I just didn't have quite as as strong a finish as I have throughout the season. So yeah, I'll I'll come back um, better and stronger, and that's my aim to have a good strong winter behind me and to be able to to finish with a blister and finish off off a similar pace. So but yeah, take the positives. I've come a long way over the last couple of months. I moved to moved to a new group in December, and it's. Um, been a lot of change but it's all been positive and I've improved step by step and um, yeah I'm going to take the positives and work on the negatives. Can, can you just talk to us uh, about that home stretch Kira? because I think everybody who was watching it was just willing you on through the TV and I think they were saying in, in the studio on RTE that they felt that you were going to get there in the end it, it must have been one of the one of those experiences where you're pushing yourself where you're really trying to, to dig deep to find something and it just wasn't there in the end. Yeah, definitely. And everybody was telling me, I thought you had it, I thought you had the medal. And that's what was going through my head. I was I was coming through strong and I and I was like, yes, yeah, just stay on, stay on. And you the Polish girl, stayed on her. Now she finished like a train and took off. Um, but I could see Laura Whiteman, the British girl in front of me. And I, I was like, you have her, you have her. Just do the same thing you've done every every race so far this season, up tall and run through the line. And whenever I came to came to the point where I just wanted to kick in a little extra gear. I was like, oh no, <laughs> we're stuck. <laughs> the gear wasn't there. I'd already I'd already used all my gears and I was up in six already and couldn't hit the night through. So um yeah, it was it was disappointing for me because I really just wanted to whenever I play it back in my head, I'm like, oh could I have could you have found something? But believe me, I was searching throughout my body to find an extra little bit to just push me on and Laura Muir managed to, or sorry, um, Laura Whiteman managed to find just a little bit to get an inch ahead of me and cross the line with her in third and me in fourth. So I'm pretty sure that home straight will haunt me for a, for a, maybe the rest of my life. But yeah, that's sport. Well, well that, that's the thing. Maybe it doesn't. Like maybe you do find an extra gear. Do you think that's possible? Oh, definitely, definitely. I've, I've, I'm, I'd have a good strong finish whenever I'm racing and. And I think for me, what will really change that is becoming stronger as as a, as the this se- season goes on and go into the winter season and into into your next season next year. I definitely think that people people wonder if it's speed, but I'm I'm fast. It's the fact that I know that I'm going to be strong enough to utilise my speed come the end, and I know that I'm going to get stronger over the next year. So I actually am really looking forward to to the years ahead because I had a taste here this this weekend of what I can do, and I can. I can be at the top table and compete against the best in Europe and, and the best in the world all being well. And yeah, I'm looking forward to what's ahead. It, I know like I can it, improve. It, it must have been a, a big deal for you as well, just putting in that performance, given what happened last summer in London, being nine seconds off your personal best in the heats. Like, I, I'm not sure were we speaking to you in the aftermath of that at all. Like, it was clearly a very painful experience watching you uh, kind of suffer like that and performing kind of way below par from your own perspective. And it's such a long wait, isn't it, to be on the very top stage again, almost a full 12 months before you can prove to the Irish public that Kira McGean deserves to be talked about in the breath that she is talked about. Yeah, no, definitely, and I probably didn't talk to you after that performance because I just didn't want to. I was, uh, I was, I was licking my wounds, and I was very upset and sore after that race. And and to 
to walk away from a championship knowing that that was not that wasn't even the athlete that I I expect to see in myself at that championship. Never mind what what the Irish public expects, and and I was bitterly disappointed after it. So to be able to come back out and to be up there racing where I want to race is that's important for me. And and yeah, it shows me that it's there. Everybody tells me that class is permanent. So hopefully that that, that championship proves that, and that I'll I'll be a regular top finisher for Ireland in, in major champs and that's my aim going forward to always be always be in the finals and always be there contending and look anybody would know once you're there knocking on the door one day it's going to open and you're going to you're going to get the reward that you want so this is what, what I plan to do for the rest of my senior career is to constantly be there knocking 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 and whenever you have a race with a handful of girls all at, all at a very similar level there's only a certain number that can medal <laughs> so yeah, that's it. I just got in my car. That's what um, that's the way it is. And you you throw us all on a track. Only somebody can medal, and somebody's going to be disappointed. So I'm the one who walks away disappointed this championship, but hopefully not in the future. And Carol, what happened last year? What was the difference between this year and last year? Um, to be honest, people kind of ask me that, and they're like, "Oh, you're you're back." I never went anywhere. I was still out running in my Irish fest, training as always, and working hard, but. As any sports person will tell you, we're not robots. And I just had I had a, a bad year where I wasn't wasn't on the form that I wanted to be. I was a little bit tired, a little bit kind of I don't know if I was run down or, or what it was, but I just had a year where it was much harder for me. All of the the simple things that I would have hoped for were quite difficult. And um, but I think it shows the strength that I came through that year, and I kept my head and I. And I knew that that wasn't the sign of of everything to come for me. I was like, no, I'll, I'll get through this. This is this is the same as any of the other tough years I've ever had. I suppose it's slightly different. Sometimes it's nearly easier being injured because you know exactly why. I didn't know why I was running poorly last year and was searching for answers. And quite often, whenever you do search for answers like that, you blame it on yourself and and you take it all intrinsically. And it's quite hard then to come out as an athlete and build the confidence back up after you've literally tore yourself to pieces in a previous year. Um, but yeah, I made a few changes and, and it was all changes for me really. I think moving to Manchester was fantastic for, for me mentally and physically. It was it was the right decision to do. Whenever I, I moved over, I, I had been living in Rathfarnham and renting a house with a, my landlord and my Croatian housemate, Igor. And um, yeah, it was difficult. It wasn't like I, I was given 110% trying to be the most professional that I could be, but it was a little bit harder to be as professional as I am now. So um, the move was, was the right move for me to come to Manchester and join Team New Balance Manchester. And I think it's really went from strength to strength. Yeah, like obviously changing up coach from Jerry Kiernan to Steve Vernon was part of that move to Manchester. And you've spoken so highly of uh, Jerry, even in the aftermath of the fourth place finish on Sunday. So it's nothing to do with him as a negative when it comes to him coaching. Maybe it was just time for a change. Maybe uh, a fresh mindset is the help and the, the main reason why this year has been a success for you. Definitely, yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of people like to think of it as I moved because I didn't want to be with Jerry. It was more of a move for me myself mentally. I'd been studying in Dublin for for kind of six, coming on seven years, um, and I'd been living there. And I think a lot of people often say it changes changes as good as the rest. Um, I respect Jerry so much as a coach and as a friend, and I do believe that Jerry could have kept kept improving and helped me get stronger and stronger and stronger. But for me, I just needed a change myself. Just for my own mentality and a little change up for me, for me physically, environmentally, um, and I do. I think Steve's done a fantastic job, and and you know what? It's not even just the coach; it's the team aspect. I have an amazing team over here. As I'm just driving, and my teammate Anna's in in the car beside me. She's delighted to hear that. But it, it's true. I whenever I was racing at the weekend, Anna was in the same heat as me, and um, so we warmed up together. We raced together. Anna unfortunately didn't make it through to the final, but Anna came down and warmed up with me for the final. And it's little things like this that make a huge difference. I have teammates around that lift and support each other every step of the way. We have good days and we have bad days, but we're all out there for each other every every step of the way. Whether it's me in the fifteen hundred or Ben Connor in the in the five k over at the weekend, we're there for each other, making sure that we're okay. Um, <laughs> my my Swedish teammates got tears in her eyes, but um, but yeah, like it, it's everything. It's a joint effort over here, and and I I definitely feel that, and I. Couldn't wait to get home to the girls. Um, Ellie Kirk, who's 
he represented Wales in the marathon over at Commonwealth. Came home and the girls had a little present for me on my bed whenever I got back last night. And, you know, it's little things like this because sometimes athletics can feel like a lonely sport and it's definitely a little bit lonelier whenever it's the bad days or whenever you're slightly disappointed. But even on my rough days, I have people around me that are, that are keeping me strong. And, yeah, I'm absolutely loving this team over here and I really do think that I'm going to go from strength to strength and I'm I'm really excited for, for the years ahead and in the Irish Fest because I think this weekend was just a taste of what I can do. There was one last thing I just wanted to say. Um, we we did a pay-per-view every Sunday and Michael Foley had this brilliant line when he was talking about athletics at the weekend about how Irish people have a muscle memory for athletics and there's like, uh, you know, all the way back to the Morton Games and Ronnie Delaney and Sonia O'Sullivan and now, like, that that race at the weekend was live on terrestrial TV. There was wall-to-wall coverage and to see an Irish singlet coming around the bend in, in competition, it means a lot. Well, thank you. Do you know what? It means a lot to me that we had so much coverage at the weekend and, like, the number of messages I got was just phenomenal. The support from people at home is amazing and I always feel bad because I can't reply to all of them but just so everybody knows that it really makes such a huge difference that we know the whole Irish nation is behind us and it, it's amazing and, and rightly so. The Irish public expect a lot from us athletes. They've had They've had a phenomenal history of watching athletics and watching the best of Irish athletes out there winning medals and on the global stage. And they got it this week with Tom, and it's absolutely fantastic to see. And, and for somebody who himself has been knocking and knocking and not won a medal, Tom deserves that so much. And, yeah, I want to I want to give the Irish public what they're waiting for whenever they watch TV. So I'm, I'm in the way that I felt just short this championship. But um, it is. It's fantastic the amount of support and coverage you've got. And to be honest, what an amazing month for, for Irish sport. Like, I've just been lifted by watching the performances of all my other Irish sports team team out there, whether it be the hockey girls or whether it be the other European championships on in Glasgow. It's, it's phenomenal. And I think it's fantastic and sport can really lift the nation. And us Irish people are always behind our sport and stars. And the sports stars certainly appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's been brilliant. Just one last thing uh, for me here, just in terms of the future and in terms of the next couple of years, like Steve Vernon has been quite open in his quote saying that 2020 is the target and I'm sure it's somewhere in your own mind. I know it's time to take a break now and you'll come back to it in a few weeks or whatever, but like when he mentions 2020, I look at it and I look at the cold figures and you look at the times from last weekend and correct me if I'm wrong here, but is the four minute mark something you're really targeting at the moment? Um. Yeah, definitely. Look, I'm I'm always aiming to improve and improve and improve. My PB is four hundred one, and I set that after after Rio in the um, in Paris after the Olympics. So, um, yeah, look, I have all these little targets in my head of what I of what I want to do, and there's magical numbers for athletes on the on the tracks. For the men, it's a sub four minute mile. For women, it's sub four minute fifteen and sub two minute eight hundred. And there's targets that I set out myself and what I'm aiming for. And like, if you're wanting to you want to be a performer on a the world class stage, you need to start knocking on certain numbers on the track. And I certainly want to be up there contending for medals at major champs for Ireland. And if I'm going to do that, I have to be running very fast and to know that I have that in my arsenal. So, yeah, there's certain numbers that are definitely in my head. I hope that I can hit them whenever I want to hit them. Um, my season isn't over yet. I'm still going to race a few more races. I'm on the way to the track right now. So, um, and just a few more races ahead of me and hopefully I can try to turn out some fast times but definitely before I retire from athletics sub 4 at 1500 metres is definitely something I hope is on the cards Well listen best of luck at uh, Birmingham this weekend Kieran. thanks a million for being so generous with your time on the way to the track cheers thanks a million not at all thanks a million cheer you congratulations again it's uh, Kieran McGee giving us some thoughts there after a uh, fourth place finish in the European Championships and uh, will be in action in Birmingham this weekend we'll keep an eye on that for you across offtheball.com and the rest of our outlets